Fort Tavanero of Our Lady of Hope Parish. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving God, uh, we do praise and bless your holy name. You have gifted us in so many ways. We are created in your image, and so each of us exhibits gifts that you are. As we honor uh, women tonight who have gifted us on our community, uh, we give you thanks and we give you glory because it is your gifts that are manifested through them. We ask you to be present to our meeting tonight, those who share with us musical uh, abilities. We ask you to continue to strengthen those gifts so they may bring joy and peace to our community. We pray for our council, the township who gather here this evening. We pray for their wisdom and the courage to enhance uh, the rights and responsibilities of the citizens of, Upper T of Gloucester Township. We ask you to bless our mayor and his administration. We ask you to protect our uh, first responders, our police department, our firefighters, and all those who try to protect us uh, from all those unfortunate and evil situations. We ask all these blessings in the name of you, our God, you are a God who is Father, Son, and Spirit. You live forever and ever. Amen. Good, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to uh, Gloucester Township's Women Who Make a, a Difference uh, ceremony. Thank you for uh, joining us uh, today as we will very shortly recognize women in our community who give back to our community and certainly uh, make a difference in uh, the lives of uh, our Gloucester Township residents. I want to bring forward um, Lindsay Giannini. Lindsay, if you could join us here. Lindsay is uh, Miss Atlantic County for 2013 and is a, a woman who makes a difference here in uh, New Jersey. Uh, as we know, March is uh, Women's History Month. 
But April uh, coming up is the um, is a Distracted Drivers Awareness Month, and Lindsay's campaign is, uh, as you can see by the sign to my right, uh, is all about awareness of of texting and driving. I read a statistic uh, today that on average 17 people are uh, killed every day in the United States by distractive driving. Uh, and that, that really struck me as, quite frankly, a very large number. And as we are so dependent upon the, the use of technology and the use of Blackberries and, and texting, uh, especially amongst our, our young people, uh, that that trend um, needs to be addressed and we need to do something about it. And Lindsay is moving forward in that capacity. When Lindsay approached us to, um, to uh, start this campaign, and she'll explain that we're putting signs around our high schools to, to make our young folks aware of the dangers of texting uh, while driving, um, it was really uh, something that was near and dear to my heart because when I was in the state uh, legislature in 2007, I was one of the prime sponsors of the law that, that made texting uh, and driving a primary offense here in New Jersey. So we're very proud here in Gloucester Township to join uh, with Lindsay's uh, campaign to, uh, to uh, spread the word about the hazards of distracted driving and texting while you're driving. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Lindsay to say a few words. Good evening, Mayor Mayer, distinguished members of council, and residents of Gloucester Township. My name is Lindsay Giannini, and I am a freshman at Rowan University and a lifelong resident of South Jersey. As you can see this evening, I am appearing before you as Miss Atlantic County, as I will be competing for Miss New Jersey in June within the Miss America system. Each Miss New Jersey and Miss America local title holder is encouraged to embrace a community service platform that is compelling to them. A platform that can be brought to the national level if I am fortunate enough to win the Miss New Jersey title and compete for Miss America right here in its home, Atlantic City. My platform is raising awareness for the dangers of distracted driving, an issue that I've actively been involved in even before I entered the Miss America system. My purpose here this evening is to receive your approval for the installation of 24 by 30 inch permanent traffic signs throughout Gloucester Township warning drivers of the distracted driving use of cell phones, specifically texting. In April of last year, I appeared before the Town of Hamilton's Mayor and Council for the same purpose I am here tonight. I am proud to say that Hamilton voted unanimously to support this important initiative, and currently 24 permanent stay alive, don't text and drive street signs are all throughout the Town of Hamilton. We are also in Mantua, Pittman, Washington Township, Winslow Township, and hopefully Gloucester Township. Tonight, I respectfully request that you join Hamilton of Atlanta County and vote tonight to embrace this life-saving awareness campaign and having Gloucester Township formally adopt the installation of these life-saving reminders for the township's residents. In June of last year, I was invited to speak before the New Jersey State Association of Police Chiefs. At that meeting, I made this very presentation. At the completion, the New Jersey Chiefs of Police Association voted unanimously to support and endorse my campaign. Tonight marks the ongoing commitment for community presentations that will surely serve to save lives on the roadways of New Jersey. I recently have been testifying on bills in the Senate working very closely with the senators in both the Assembly and the Congress, the senators in the Senate and the Assemblymen in Congress for a bill that creates a task force distracted driving and state funding for my science. One of the reasons I decided to target the dangers of texting while driving is because texting behind the wheel requires all three of the main types of distracted driving. It visually takes your eyes off of the road, it cognitively takes your mind off of the road, and it manually takes one hand off of the wheel. Texting and driving is truly a life-threatening problem, especially teens. I am determined to help lower the number of needless deaths on the roadways of America by raising the awareness of the dangers of texting while driving. What better place to start in the very county I am here tonight? Recent studies have shown that texting and other cell phone use while driving are responsible for car crashes that kill an average of 17 people each and every day in the United States. This is not purely a statistic. This is nearly 6,000 sisters, <coughs> brothers, mothers, and friends who do not need dads, friends who don't need to die each year. With over 2.5 billion text messages being sent 
each day and over 70% of young adults admitting to texting when while driving. U.S. Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood has called distracted driving a dangerous epidemic that's killing or injuring over 500,000 people each year. Through my speaking engagements, my website, www.donttextanddrive.org, my Facebook page, Don't Text and Drive NJ, PADD.org, and the overwhelming support from the New Jersey State Association of Chiefs of Police, various local New Jersey community government and police officials, Gloucester Township will now serve as a template to other New Jersey communities for this valuable safety initiative. Here is an example of the sign. The actual 24 by 30 inch permanent street signs are being manufactured under the highest DOT standards under the direction of Mike Kaleni, the chairman of the nonprofit organization People Against Distracted Driving, of which I am a founding board member. I hope that Gloucester Township can designate a small budget to acquire some of these signs perhaps being installed by our local highway department employees. However, tonight I am offering four of these signs at no cost to the taxpayers to get the ball rolling here in this community. I previously provided an example of the town resolution that was utilized in the town of Hamilton to adopt the street sign. The concept is to have local police chiefs designate the appropriate locations throughout your community to install the signs. He would be asked to select these sites as the most effective locations for reminding the, drive, the drivers of Gloucester Township to stay alive, don't text and drive. I recommend that it be your police chief who identifies the best locations, since I respectfully suggest that there is no person more qualified than the chief of police of a community to have the final say when it comes to protecting the roadways of a community, especially in a grassroots safety initiative such as this. At this time, and with all of your permission, I ask that you participate in a simple exercise. So I want everyone in the room to close their eyes and not open them until I say so. So everyone close your eyes. Okay, open your eyes. You just had your eyes closed for about five seconds. It takes five seconds to send one text message. In the time you just had your eyes closed, at 55 miles per hour, you would have traveled the length of a football field, blinded by texting. We have an opportunity to truly save lives. And as I've stated before, we have the opportunity for Gloucester Township to lead by example so that other New Jersey communities will hopefully do their part and make drivers in their towns aware of the life-threatening dangers of texting and cell phone use while driving. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Gloucester Township and the Mayor and Council for supporting this crucial and innovative safety initiative. Thank you. Lindsay, uh, thank you so very much for your uh, for your efforts in, uh, in promoting this very very important uh, issue, and we certainly will be displaying these signs throughout our community. And it's really because of your initiative uh, that we're able to do that. So we thank you so very much. We look forward to seeing you in Atlantic City uh, this summer, and and uh, we wish you the very very best in, in that endeavor. So again, thank you very much. Gloucester Township has um, the ability to celebrate Women's History Month and this month we will be recognizing some extraordinary women who have undoubtedly made a difference in our community. Um, whether they have been raising funds for pediatric cancer, started a shelter rescue, or just helped out a struggling neighbor, the following women that we're going to recognize have truly, truly made a difference in 
all of our lives and I think afterwards they all deserve a huge round of applause. Uh, we definitely didn't have a shortage of nominations this year and I'm so happy to be able to be a part of the community um, that's able to embrace these women for what they're doing for all of us. Um, before we get started with recognizing these women, I wanted to invite Mayor Mayer up in recognizing the 100th anniversary of the Women's Suffrage Parade in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Suzanne. Again, uh, welcome uh, to our celebration uh, this month of women's history and uh, their contribution to our community here in Gloucester Township. As Suzanne mentioned, um, this month uh, marks the 100th anniversary of the uh, women's suffrage uh, procession that occurred on May the third. Uh, I'm sorry, March the third, uh, in Washington D.C. Now, this was no ordinary parade. Uh, this really was a trail of heroes, uh, individuals from throughout our country that took a cause uh, to bring attention to women's uh, suffrage. And as we look at the participants of that parade, uh, they are really a reflection of who we are today. Because individuals that participated in that parade included female doctors and pharmacists and farmers and uh, um, homemakers, um, working women, nurses. Uh, these were, as the program says, true pioneers in moving our country and our communities forward. As we reflect upon the uh, 100th anniversary of that uh, trail of heroes, I think we need to be uh, also reminded of New Jersey's connection uh, to that procession. You see, that uh, procession happened the day before uh, President uh, Woodrow Wilson took the oath of office. And as you may know, the, uh, President Wilson was also governor of the, uh, of the state of New Jersey. Um, individuals from New Jersey, including Alice Paul, which you may have, uh, the name of which you may have heard previously, um, really uh, participated in this parade, moved our nation forward, but also um, Alice Paul moved uh, our state forward in, um, in fighting for uh, women's uh, suffrage and in that, that movement. So as we gather here today, let us uh, remember uh, those individuals that, that um, really started this uh, trail uh, of heroes and this trail of uh, women's suffrage as we gather here today to look at, uh, to uh, reflect and to acknowledge uh, the women here in Gloucester Township who are continuing to mo move us uh, in, in, the, in the direction of, of uh, women's rights and suffrage. Thank you very much. Actually, uh, the timeless love story. It's about uh, an, Egypt an Egyptian captain and a Nubian princess who fall in love, but their love uh, is, is almost like a forbidden type of love. Would you guys agree? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, will, will we be performing now, or will we be performing at the end? Now you're going to do two now. Two now? Do another oh, pyramid, yeah. and then we'll do the other two later. Well, uh, in this part of the song, uh, my character, whose name is Rodney's, um, is being told by my father. Zozer. Zozer, that the, the Egyptian pharaoh has been fallen has fallen ill. However, we find out through the song that he is actually poisoning the pharaoh. <laughs> Bad guy. Um, so I guess we're <laughs> While you've been awake and boarding, Majesty, you have moved apace. Now I need you home supporting all the plans I've put in place. 
First of all, this means your wedding. Here we call your future bride. For the way that Pharaoh's heading, time's no longer on our side. According to the oh God, war is almost regal in the lid. It's not that much longer for us to build another pyramid. You mean the Pharaoh's fallen ill? Is it serious? I'm afraid so. I must go to him. Now bring some comfort. There are many who will be tearful as our leader fades away. But our architects are cheerful, and each dog must have its day. If our country is to flourish, then my son must take the lead. Be our inspiration, nourish all our hopes, our dreams, our greed. Soon our monarchs will have built a tomb, just like his fathers did. Summon Egypt's greatest builders, read another pyramid. Build it, build it, another pyramid. There will be a time for mourning, but for now put plans on hold. I give the nation warning that before the corpse is cold, we'll extend their Egypt's power, Egypt's glory, strength, and style. We shall have our finest hour far beyond the mighty Nile. We must have a vault that's grand by any standards for to live. For five thousand slaves on standby, build another pyramid. Build it, build it, build it, build it, build it, build it, build it. Must have a vault that's grand by and stand his floor to live. Put five thousand slaves on standby, build another pyramid. Surely rings 
Isabel, for as you are his daughter, you probably can tell how I know you. Yes, I know you. What you say is better left unknown And now I'm just a slave like you Our lives are not our own I never have abandoned And nor I think could you The spark of hope for freedom No terror can subdue my own silence you've never seen my face no you remain a princess in any time or place you don't know me yes I know you you Good evening, everyone. As I look around the audience, I see a large contingent of groups supporting all our honorees this evening. Blackwood Kiwanis Little League, Blackwood Fire Department, Choose United Methodist Church, First Presbyterian of Blackwood, St. Agnes, did I miss any here? Uh, our schools. Uh, thank you for all coming out and supporting our family and friends today. Uh, and also thank you to the cast of Aida for coming. I had contacted uh, Anita Rowland, uh, Anna Roland, I'm sorry, uh, from no, no, Anita Roland, okay, my honor is Anita Braun, okay, Anita Roland from uh, Highland High School to have her cast come here about 10 days ago on behalf of the committee, and uh, there was enthusiasm on their part to come here and perform, so thank you for coming out this evening. We have been doing this for about eight or nine years in our township, and we have honored several women throughout our community. And it warms my heart when we have individuals that have been honored in the past that come back to take part in our celebration. So there are a few past honorees here. If they could just please stand up and be recognized. Thank you for coming back. Thank you. Something that my pastor says, Reverend Wilson of Chiefs United Methodist Church, that um, has been ingrained in my head over the last five years that he's been at Choose United Methodist Church in Glendora. He talks about caring about the least, the last, and the lost. And what you're going to find out today, this evening, there are individuals, all the individuals that are being honored this evening, that care about the least in our community, the lost, and those that are perceived to be last. Our first honoree this evening is Anita Braun, and she's a perfect example of someone who cares about our community. Anita, can you please come up? Anita was born and raised in Sugarloaf, Pennsylvania. Uh, that's up in the uh, Pocono Mountains. Driving the trouble. Yes. yes. Uh, she was born and raised there. She attended Penn State University, uh, spent some time in Happy Valley, and had too much of a good time there. Uh, so she came back 25 years later and finished her degree at Eastern University, where she received a degree in organizational management. She worked for uh, Blackwood, excuse me, Blackwell Book Services. Uh, as an executive for 21 years and in the last few years has worked for Taylor Publishing, Taylor Francis Publishing. She has a wonderful uh, daughter uh, and a granddaughter and a wonderful son-in-law. She told me to mention that as well. <laughs> uh, and I came to know, uh, well she's lived in our community for 28 years. She lives in, in the La Cascada development here in Gloucester Township. But I came to know Anita through Choose United Methodist Church. She serves as a lay speaker 
uh, at Choose United Methodist Church. He's also the chairperson of the outreach committee. Uh, that outreach committee, outreach team, uh, not only provides missions, uh, has missions in our community, Glendora, uh, Gloucester Township, and our surrounding communities, but also throughout the world. And some of the tasks that they have been, uh, that they have done over the, the previous years and currently doing, uh, when our neighbors were struck with Hurricane Sandy on the Jersey Shore, they collect buckets of supplies. And those supplies uh, was a United Methodist type mission and she led that charge to collect that. In fact, uh, Choose United Methodist Church on the direction of Anita served as a site for our Martin Luther King Day of Service. So individuals and volunteers provided supplies for those buckets for Sandy. In addition to that, they prepare meals and deliver them to the Mary Jane Enrichment Center in Philadelphia and also to the Neighborhood Center in Camden, New Jersey. Uh, in July and in all, uh, July and December, they provide toys to Trevor's Place uh, located in Philadelphia. Trevor's Place is a place for homeless families and, and what it does is it provides them the tools to get back on their feet. In addition to that, she's the Secretary of the Church Council. Uh, she's on the Board of Directors of the Neighborhood Center in Camden, New Jersey. Uh, she was just appointed to the District United Methodist Church uh, Women's Team Mission, missions team as well and yesterday while most of us are probably watching NCAA tournament basketball or, or doing things with our family uh, she was cooking and delivering food to New Beginnings United Methodist Church with a contingent of uh, volunteers from Choose United Methodist Church in our community in fact uh, something that her and her late husband Tom used to do well Tom had said that on Thanksgiving he wanted to cook dinner for those who needed it and she wasn't too keen on the idea when it was first proposed to her. Uh, but that became their thing, for Tom and her to serve Thanksgiving dinner. So they would cook 20 turkeys and deliver them uh, to New Beginnings United Methodist Church in Camden. And after Tom passed away, her family came to her and said, why don't we continue this in Tom's honor? This is the person who cares about the least, the last, and the loss in our community. And this is the person who makes a difference in our community. So on behalf of mayor and council, I present you with this plaque and award for a woman who makes a difference on behalf of the 70,000 residents of Gloucester Township. Congratulations. I have tried for many years. Um, James 2, 14 through 17 is my life verse. And it talks about how um, we need to have action along with our faith. And if we walk past someone who's hungry and we just say, hey, have a nice day, then our faith is worthless. And the last line of that, James 2, 17, says faith without action is dead. And I try to make my faith alive. Um, but I'm, I'm only the vessel that God uses at Choose United Methodist Church and elsewhere. And if it weren't for the congregation of Choose, Many people throughout the community of Glendora, the people in the development in which I live, I couldn't accomplish anything. So this is their award, not mine. to Sandy Casey, the Woman Who Made a Difference Award for Gloucester Township. You can come up. Uh, Sandy was nominated by Tracy Elwell, who was the principal of um, Union Valley School, who couldn't be here tonight. Um, but she's a full-time nurse, and she does a lot of her work helping get people who are disabled back to work. And that's one of her jobs. She has at least two that she gets paid for anyway. Uh, but she has many tasks that she uh, accomplishes regularly. She uh, became part of the PTO at Union Valley um, School. And they kind of, I guess, saw the potential there and how she would be willing to give and do. And definitely took advantage of that. And they have, she started out as the fundman, fundraiser, fundraising chairperson. Um, with that, she kind of went above and beyond. Normally, you know, you set up the little gift wrapping fundraisers and, you know, all those things that we've all 
gotten from our kids who have taken home from school. But she kind of took it to another level. She wanted to mix in the community and family and the school faculty. So she's done a couple different fundraisers with that, and they seem to have taken off. Um, one was at Monkey Town, right? Isn't that what it's called? Yeah, Monkey Town. It's in Washington Township. It has all the bouncy toys and stuff like that. So they actually closed um, the business for the evening, except for the Union Valley people. And they went and had a fun evening, and it was parents and kids and teachers, right? The faculty went to. Um, and that has taken off. And what was the other one we talked about? Oh, the art fundraiser. She did an art fundraiser, which is really kind of neat. She worked through the art teacher at the school. And each week, or however many, it's not every week, it's every week. <coughs> six or seven days that they go to art class, um, they, each kid had a project to work on, each student. And it took a couple of weeks and they had a deadline to have it done by. And then they actually used those items and you could, um, I guess it was make different things out of their craft. And then they were items that the parents or anyone who wishes to could purchase. So they were great Christmas gifts and things for the family. Um, but it was a wonderful project because the whole school was excited about it and it was everyone from it's pre preschool on up. So it was really neat, you know, for the kids to be able to do that and accomplish it. And she said they were really excited about it and they looked forward to going to art class every day, when, you know, as often as they went. Um, so she was the fundraising chair. Now she's the vice president of the PTO. Um, and she still assists with the fundraising, you know, just helping them out and guiding them along. And the ideas that she put into place are continuing, even though she's not in that role. Um, she goes to the Board of Ed meetings and speaks up in... Uh, for Union Valley, and she's even dressed up as the mascot at times for the school. Um, she participates in all different events, fun uh, food drives, the giving tree, clothing drives, ovarian cancer walk, the MS walks, and many other things. Um, she's a great role model and an outstanding individual, and her children have someone you know, to be proud of, exactly. So I'd like to present this on behalf of Council and Township. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone that does know me would definitely say I'm not one to be in front here to look for that attention or recognition. I honestly go out every day to try and make a difference in someone's life. And I think that's so important just for the simple fact that that's lost in all the hecticness and the busyness that all of us experience just in day-to-day -day living. And I think that if all of us could just try, and even if it's the smallest thing, make a difference or go out of our way to make a difference, I think that all of us would have a better world. And I think that we can all take the time to do that. I also believe that all of us are touched upon whatever backgrounds we come from, religion-wise. Um, but it is the work of God why any of us are even here today, but certainly which helps us to guide us to seek out the people that need help the most so I guess for me I you know encourage each and every one of the people that are here tonight to just try and make a difference starting tomorrow or even tonight thank you very much Please come down. This is the first time I've met Laurie, but I can tell you I know that she works like a dog. I myself have been in education for 32 years and I've seen the PTO organizations, what they do, what they mean to the school, and this fine lady right here, Lori, is the president of HERS. I know it's not a big organization. Mrs. Stubbs, who nominated you, said it's a compact, tight nucleus of power hitters. They never stop, and you are the driving force. You keep going, going, going like the Energizer Bunny. You never stop. 
So after the 32 years of the people that I saw, there's always in organizations that nucleus that keeps going and going and never stops. And this fine lady right here is the one that takes care of that. What I want to know, the coach bag fundraiser? Bag bingo. Coach Bag Bingo, could you tell them what that's all about, please? Because I know a lot of people really right. love Coach Bags. Right. <laughs> so our big success this year, finally, was Coach Bag Bingo. We had over 250 people come, and we auctioned off 10 uh, designer coach bags. Um, it was the most successful fundraiser we ever had. It was the most fun we ever had together. It was stressful, it was wonderful, and I am so proud to be part of our school and what we do because I have a small group of people that really make me look great every single day. I have Miss Stubbs who is so supportive, and I also have our faculty and our staff of our school who are the most dedicated people I've ever met in my whole life. So they really make it easy. I love doing it. I love the kids. Um, we feel like rock stars when we go through the school when you're part of the PTO. You know, the kids really do appreciate it and that's why we do it and that makes every day worth it. So if you can and you don't already, help out in a school somewhere. Um, they could definitely use the help every day. And since you're doing such a fine job, the community projects, why don't you just give a, a, a spiel about a few of your projects? What we're working on with our school. Let it run. You want to run. You want to run. Let her go. Let her go. We, uh, our schools we just got done, I don't know, uh, for our schools themselves, our biggest thing right now is we have a little boy named Nico who's sick with cancer. So we just raised um, a lot of money for him, uh, for the St. Baldrick's program that was just there on Sunday. We work with everything in our community. Um, we, we try to touch each family wherever we can, where we know where there's issues. We try to do fun things for all of the kids, especially in our school. We're a Title I school. Um, our parents, a lot of them don't have a lot of money. And what we started to incorporate when I became president was giving um, fun nights just for the families. We do candy bar bingos. We um, do yard sales, uh, just a lot of community events. It's not just about fundraising for us, the money is definitely there, but year by year we're trying to add more things in for our community, to do with our community and with our kids. And as a teacher, Laura, I would like to thank you because not enough people see what you guys do, and you don't get enough thanks from the teachers either. So thank you so much, and on behalf of Mayor and Council, you make a difference. Thank you so much. Thank you.
In recent years, Isabel has been an integral part of the building vision team at the church, whose job was to oversee the repair of construction of our 160-year-old building. She served as a member of the building vision team for almost five years. Isabel worked extremely hard on the project and was a major player in many of our fundraising efforts. It is clear from speaking with her that she cares deeply for her church and her church family. Isabel has also served the community of Gloucester Township in many ways. She has served faithfully on the Blackwood West Redevelopment Committee, Farmers Market Committee, and Blackwood Lake Committee. She and her husband, Charlie, have spent many a Saturday morning in the spring and <coughs> summer making sure everything runs smoothly at the Farmers Market. It has become a wonderful community tradition, partly due to her efforts. In my opinion, Isabel is a worthy candidate for the Women Who Make a Difference Award, as she has certainly made a difference in her church, as well as in Gloucester Township. Prior to coming today, I spoke with uh, our township clerk, Rosemary DeJosie, and when I indicated uh, who I was going to be presenting for this evening, uh, she had glowing remarks about you, and indicates that uh, whenever they have a um, Elections, you work the polls on election day. And she says you work harder than anybody else. Wow. <laughs> so you're very deserving of winning this award. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Dan. Thank you for not with me. <laughs> I just want to thank Mary Council for the, for doing this for the people of Gloucester Township. Uh, I want to thank our pastor Mike Astor <laughs> for uh, nominating me for this award. Um, it's an honor and a privilege uh, to receive this. Uh, we do wonderful things in our church and. We, welcome anyone that would like to come and see what we do to come. Um, I would also like to invite you all to the farmer's market. We, we do work hard at the farmer's work market. We run it uh, from the end of June through October, and we would like to see more people come out. It's in the middle of Blackwood, uh, next to Choose Florist, and uh, it's an important part of our community. We have a lot of great farmers that come there. We set tents up every Saturday morning, early in the morning from 8 to 1 o'clock, uh, right there on Black Horse Pike, so come and see us. Thank you. Recipient is uh, Miss Anna O'Toole. Would you come forward, please? <laughs> Anna O'Toole is a member of our Lady of Hope Catholic Church. She has been the president of the St. Vincent de Paul Society for the past three years. This group collects food and money for the needed. The food is stored at our Lady of Hope food bank located on Coles Road. The food bank is open to Gloucester Township residents on a weekly basis. Annie organizes home visits for the people that were unable to pick up their food. A few years ago, a young lady from the West Coast showed up at the church on Christmas Eve without a place to stay. A member of Annie's group put her up in a motel and called her parents and they provided for her safe her trip to the West Coast. Annie is very active in the church. She helps with the Sunday Masses and she's always available to work on various committees. Annie, I'd like to produce uh, you. this award to you and you have an opportunity to say a few words to thank the group. You, thank you. I'm privileged to be a member of the St. Vincent de Paul Society. We do provide food to approximately 200 uh, clients per month. Um, we respect the clients. We certainly 
um, try to fulfill their needs. I'd like to thank Mr. Mayor, the Council, for your support to the community. I'd like to thank Father Mark. He inspires me to be a better person. Uh, my family and every member of the St. Vincent de Paul Society, they are the backbone of this conference. Thank you. selections from our show Aida, for one more, I believe there's two more. Um, so, coming from what happened at the last one of the show, at this point, I guess this would be the song where I begin to, I guess, confess my love to Aida. That's her. Okay, um, whenever you're ready. <coughs> To sail away, to have discovered places To see the secrets so few eyes have seen To see moments of enchantment on our faces The moments when we smile and those between Are you talking about Nubia now? Yes, in a way leave this place and I go sailing to corners of my land where there would be sweet southern winds of liberty prevailing beauty so majestic and so free I will take you sailing south you could be my guide would you let me steer would you run us aground of course where there are no people and I jump off the boat and kick off my sandals and run. Let me no one scold me and tell me to behave like a. to behave. There'd be no ties of time and space to bind me. No horizon I could not pursue. I leave the world's misfortunes far behind me. I put my faith and trust in something new. But why should I tell you this? A stranger I've just met. A woman whom I hardly know at all and should forget. A journey we can only dream of. Enchantment passing through, and how is it I say these things so easily to you? This is meaningless. I'll never take you sailing. I'm never going to leave Egypt again. Instead, I'll sit on the throne and send other men off on their expeditions. You talk as though you've been enslaved. Not with chains, baby, but with a marriage promise. Oh, what's that for? To dry my weeping eyes, forced to marry a princess. Oh, what hardships. I know you want to go to lands where people have been living for centuries and say that you've discovered them, and instead you're being thrust onto the Pharaoh's throne. It is a great tragedy. Now you go too far! No, you go too far. If you don't like your fate, change it. You are your own master. There are no shackles on you. So don't expect pity or understanding from this humble palace slave. That was rude. You need to stop, right? Stop! I command you to stop! <laughs> but why did I tell her this? A stranger I just met A woman whom I hardly know at all And will forget Another must end on tomorrow Enchantments passing through 
And all I've done is tell her things That she already
I wish I could sing like that. I get out two uh, notes and my kids tell me to shut up already. <laughs> you guys are wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm here to honor tonight Valerie Pastor. Valerie is the founder of Princess Buttercup Foundation, and it's a rescue for pit bulls. And I'm so thankful to actually be able to stand up here and present this award to her. She was nominated by an acquaintance that had met her five years ago when she was a teenager, and they were so impressed with her dedication and compassion to animals, and they felt that she was so wise beyond her years in her maturity, professionalism, and dedication to be able to see something through to its fruition to start this foundation. When I talked to Valerie on the phone, uh, and then met her, I can totally understand what uh, Jenna had meant when she said that because I expected a grown, this adult to be in front of me when I met her and she just is so young and, and just so full of life and, and it's just so wonderful to see what she's doing with the animals. But uh, she started Princess Buttercup foundation to save pit bulls uh, from the shelters that would otherwise be euthanized and what she does is she tries to find them homes or fo uh, foster some so that they can live and live a well-deserved life. She's also working to help children and other adults learn that they're such misunderstood animals. She has been given the honor to be able to take the dogs to schools uh, nursery, uh, like preschools, any opportunity that she gets to be able to talk about her foundation and how these dogs really can be productive members of society. And she's working very hard. I asked her what else she does in her spare time uh, other than working with the dogs and she said nothing. She said her life is dedicated to these dogs and to saving them and making sure that they find good homes like the other animals that we see in the shelters. She's also been featured in a magazine, the Spring 2011 e-magazine called Mission Pets. Her dedication is contagious. Just in talking to her, it was uh, it got me excited because in my family we had a dog that was part pit bull and actually my children are exposed to dog pit bulls every day with neighbors and I certainly agree that they are misunderstood animals and unless you have the opportunity to be around them you really don't know what a great pet they can actually be and, and I thank you for what you're doing and to keep up your dedication and I hope that you continue your work and, and good things happen so thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. First I would like to thank Jenna for nominating me. Um, I guess mostly what I want to say is you know I love these dogs and they really are my life. That's I'm always on the computer trying to help dogs. Um, it's really... <laughs> it really means a lot to me that I'm getting this award because I've been doing this since I was 13 years old um, because of my aunt, my mom, my grandmoms, both my grandmoms. Um, you know, it's because of them that I'm able to help so many dogs. Um, and in particular, the rescue. We started the rescue because of one dog. Um, her name is Princess Buttercup. Princess Buttercup, and she was going to be euthanized because, um, unfortunately, she didn't like other dogs, and a lot of people, you know, pitbulls have a bad rap as it is, and because she didn't like dogs, they were going to euthanize her for that, and the only thing that saved her is that I took her to a school one time, she got to meet all these kids, I have pictures of her, you know, meeting all these kids that she never met before, and that's how I started the rescue, because of her, and, um, that's why I love going to schools with little kids. Um, my two cousins over here, Colin and Ava, um, you know, I actually went to Ava's school one time with all her classmates and brought my dog, Olive, who's a canine good citizen, to her school um, just to teach the kids, like, pit bulls are good dogs. They're just like any other dog. It, they just have a bad rap. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, you know, um, you can visit us at uh, www.princessbuttercupfoundation.org. We love doing events. We actually just did an event two days ago. I don't know if you guys have heard about it. It's a doggy Easter egg hunt. 
This was our second year doing it. And um, it's just a really fun event that dog lovers can come out to and have their dog search for eggs uh, with treats in them. Um, we love doing events like that where people and their dogs come together and just have fun. And while, you know, trying to promote pit bulls at the same time. So if any of you guys are interested in, maybe you have a dog that you think is really good with kids and would love to come to schools with us, or if you want to help us do some really, really awesome events, please visit our website. We would love to have you. basically perform for them. Very comfortable in the classroom, very comfortable in front of people. This is weird. I'm kind of going out of my comfort zone, so I ask for brief indulgences here and there. Anita Braun, I heard you say something earlier. You, I, I believe you quoted the book of James, and I'm dangerous when I start quoting the Bible. But you indicated faith without action is dead. And that's what makes me think of the individual uh, that I'm going to call up here. At certain points, I'm going to read from what was given to me. And then I'm going to mention a couple other things as how it relates to me. So bear with me if I botch it a little bit. Gianna, come up here. This is Gianna Rose Ritz. God works in mysterious ways. Um, I'm going to be receiving my baptism and confirmation this week, and Gianna touched me tonight. As I was preparing to say a couple of words for her, or on her behalf, I said, go out of your comfort zone. Say what's in here, and don't be afraid to do that. So that's what I'm doing. Um, Joanne, are you her mom? Mm -hmm. Okay. Joanne wrote this for her daughter, so I feel obligated uh, to read what she wrote. Gianna Rose is a warm-hearted young woman who is not only a giver to those less fortunate, but has always put everyone above herself. She started a service project seven years ago to collect hats for the homeless after witnessing a homeless man I'm sorry. a homeless man eating out of a trash can on a trip to New York City with her family. Why does that touch me? Well, the same way Valerie was touched by the need to, to speak about dogs. Um, my mother was homeless. She lived in, in New York. From the age of five through the age of 17, I had, I had not seen my mother. And I always thought how lucky I was between those ages that I didn't have anybody telling me what time I had to be in, what I had to do. My father worked around the clock, and I felt so lucky not to have a mother, not to have somebody telling me. After going over ways in which we could help the unfortunate, she came up with this idea on her own at the age of 10. <coughs> she brings boxes to local churches throughout the year where people donate hats, scarves, and gloves. During the winter months, we gather and box all the items and bring them to the cathedral kitchen in Camden. Here they're given out to anyone who needs them. John is a talented artist. She takes pride in our country and the people who serve it. Her father, Mike, as a police officer. And most of her aunts, uncles, and cousins serve in the community in some way. 
whether it be a firefighter, EMT, police officer. She's drawn and sold pictures of 9-11 firefighters, donating copies and percentages to the New York Firefighters Benevolent Society. She has such a large heart, has never asked for anything in return. Gianna Rose is always trying to bring awareness to the plight of the homeless. Every opportunity she has to write about it, she will. Her theme for every essay or writing project is always homelessness in America. Her college and admission essays were all related to homelessness. She truly has a passion for this injustice and promises to continue her little way of serving the homeless. To me, she's touched me. I haven't seen my mother in 15 years. I'm going to see her. I tell you, it's a great place to live, Gloucester Township. Every one of these individuals being honored tonight all do things that are very similar. They give above themselves. And every one of them have reached out to the community one way or the other. And that's what makes Gloucester Township a great place. Last month we honored Black History Month, and almost every one of those individuals had God as the center part of their life. And most of the people here, if not all of them, have God as the center part of their life. So when I'm having difficulty in my day and what I do, it always seems I come here and I get reminded what the central part of our lives should be. And we need to remember that. We need to keep, keep reaching out to people. Keep reaching out and helping people just like these great people have done and, and continue to do. But I'd like to take the time to uh, ask Caroline Scherer to come join me and Father It's my honor to uh, talk a little bit about Caroline. Um, she was nominated by Father Mark Habanero, pastor of the Our Lady of Hope Parish. Um, along with Deacon Michael Scott, um, Caroline founded an organization incorporated in 2004 called People for the Poor. This organization raises funds to be distributed to various food banks, soup kitchens, shelters for women and men. They service a rather large area covering Camden, Burlington, Cumberland, and Atlantic counties. Their website is www.peopleforthepoor.org. 100% of the funds raised go to these groups that help the needy. 100%. Not, nothing goes to the individuals that work for this organization or volunteer. Recently, she approached Father to ask for donations of socks. <coughs> it seems that Our Lady of Lourdes Outreach Program in Camden saw a need for clean socks where the street people often stop into their offices for medical needs. Just think about it. Every day we get up and we put on a clean pair of socks, we don't have to worry about, am I going to have a pair? Or where's my, you know, how are my feet going to be uh, that day? I reach in my drawer every day and I put on a pair of socks. Thank God for my wife. She can make sure they're clean. <laughs> but we don't have to worry about things like that. <coughs> Something simple, Caroline saw a need and decided to do something about it. 
She has often arrived at our door after a parasocial to see if any food is left over. Having packaged the food, she then personally drives to soup ki kitchens or shelters. How many times do we throw food away? And there's people out there that could, could use it. Unfortunately, my plate, I usually clean it. <laughs> and that's a problem I have. I should give some. She is a faith-filled person, very active in the church community, providing refreshments for various gatherings, serving as minister of the Eucharist on Sundays, and serving on committees when needed. Caroline is a person that gives, and I think we can all learn from that, not only from Caroline, but from everybody that we're honoring tonight. It only takes a little bit to give and to help someone, and I think these people are all the examples of that, and I'm proud to present you with the uh, Women Who Make a Difference uh, Award. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure uh, with the other pastors uh, could say that uh, we try to inspire people with the Word of God and sometimes it catches, sometimes it doesn't. But those who catch it, those who know uh, the need is out there, uh, they, they run with it. And uh, I'm just so very proud of those in our churches, all our churches, who have done such wonderful work uh, making God present. Uh, to those who are less fortunate than ourselves and, and our love. So I want to thank all of you. As I was sitting next to Father Mark, I just looked at him and I said, I don't belong here. Uh, you, you're, you women are my inspiration. Uh, you have no idea. I feel like all we do fundraisers, the neighborhood center, the cathedral kitchen, we fiscally support because of what <coughs> they do. Gathering socks. Now, I'm a little bit of a competitive person within myself. And when I approached Father Mark uh, a couple of years ago and I said, you know, I've got a unique idea for helping the homeless. And, and when I was talking to Project Hope, which is an organization that does nothing but give medical care to the homeless. And so when I was talking to Pat, and I said, look, what can we do to help you? And she said, we need socks. And I went, socks. And she said, some of my people wear the same pair of socks every day for a year. I can't even imagine wearing the same pair of socks two days in a row. But uh, so when I approached Father Mark, he said, great, let's make that our Lenten campaign. Well, last year, oh, the first year we did it, my tr I had a police car. I had a town, uh, you know, one of those big police cars. I had my trunk, my back seat, my front seat, the car behind me the same. And I was driving them over to Lourdes. And I called Dip, who was the unit secretary for the ER at Lourdes. I said, hey, Dip, we're on our way for the socks because they got the socks for her. So anyhow, I called her and I said, Dip, we're on our way. And she said, fine. So she comes out with a little <coughs> kitchen cart. <laughs> and I pull up, pop my trunk, open the back seat, and she said, I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> so last year, we raised, we filled... 20, those big black trash bags? Okay. We filled 28 of them last year. <laughs> nope. Nope. Not enough. As I said, I'm a little bit competitive within myself. This year, the parishioners of Our Lady of Hope filled 35 bags of them. All I do is just do a little thing, and it was my little idea, and the people have been absolutely tremendous, as has every one of these women who have spoken this evening. What an honor it is, A, to receive this award, and two, to be among these women. Thank you.
if I could just add one very quick uh, comment. She gives out uh, uh, checks every year to shelters, food banks, and all that. How much money did you give out last year? This year? This year? Uh, we're approaching the quarter of a million dollar mark. I would now like to honor Debbie Simone. <laughs> Debbie was nominated by her husband this evening, and she was nominated because of her dedication to Gloucester Township and her hard work with all the things that she's involved in. She's a longtime resident of Gloucester Township. She is a wife and a mother, a loving mother to her family. She holds not only a full-time job, but a part-time job, and somehow still finds the time to be involved in all the activities that she is in Gloucester Township. She is, uh, has been dedicated her time, her spare time, whatever it could possibly be, uh, to the different items in Gloucester Township, such as in the past, coaching and refing sports with GTGAA, assisting Blackwood Elementary School PTO, school functions, providing assistance to youth groups within Camden County. She's uh, participated in the community potluck dinner, sharing when families were in need of community assistance. She also supports the Interfaith Homeless Outreach Council, which provides meals for homeless. She also is involved in, uh, in the past, she was the Democratic County Committee and held a position as the Democratic District Leader. She currently holds the position of President of Blackwood Fire Company Auxiliary, where she is the primary contact for the township to provide support and assistance for the Pumpkin Festival and the Blackwood Christmas Parade. She also organizes National Night Out and is currently working with the St. Baldrick's Foundation for Childhood Cancer and they di did just have a fundraiser yesterday at Sam's Bar and Grill, which she will talk about in a moment. She's confident and dedicated in every aspect of her life in Gloucester Township, both to her family and to the activities that she supports. And for that, her husband and on behalf of Mayor and Council, we're proud to present you with this award. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to my husband for <laughs> nominating me for this. Thank you. Um, I, I really owe my thanks more to the Black Fire Company family that I have because without them, I could never have accomplished what I did yesterday. Oh. <laughs> yesterday, we raised over $43,000. It was hard, it was a lot of work, but I certainly didn't do it alone. Um, the gentleman in the back, all from Blackwood Fire Company, willingly shaved their heads. <laughs> and they did it, and the reason behind St. Baldrick's is because these kids go through chemotherapy and they eventually lose their hair due to the treatment. Because of that, um, the, the gentleman that actually started St. Baldrick's Foundation thought of the idea to shave your head. This way, the kids felt m more a part of society that they fit in, that they didn't look so different. So um, to you guys that did this, that shaved your head, thank you. 
More importantly, my mother-in-law, 69 years old, shaved her head in memory of my sister-in-law, who passed away two years ago from cancer. Uh, that was a great event uh, yesterday, Debbie. Great, uh, great job uh, to all uh, involved. Uh, I, have, ladies and gentlemen, I have the uh, privilege of uh, acknowledging uh, an individual I think who is uh, really a, a beam of hope in in our community, uh, Senior Pastor Toki Taylor, who is not able to be with us uh, today, uh, but she is the Senior Pastor of the Fruit of the Spirit Ministries. But joining us from the Fruit of the Spirit Ministries is Nafisha Tyler. If you could please join me on behalf of, uh, of Pastor Taylor. Um, ladies and gentlemen, there is an old wooden church that sits on the hill on Davistown Road, uh, the old Solomon Wesley uh, Church. Uh, that church uh, not only um, was a um, big place of uh, worship, um, but was also a big part of history as it was one of the stations uh, for the Underground uh, rail Railroad uh, during the, uh, the Civil War. Uh, a tremendous amount of history uh, that is in Gloucester Township. But that old church on the hill um, sat there for many years unused until uh, Pastor Taylor. Pastor Taylor uh, met with me, uh, I guess it was last year, and said, you know, she wants to uh, revitalize uh, that church, uh, to bring back the spirit uh, that was once there as part of the Solomon Wesley Church. And so today, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have brought back the spirit, uh, and there is a light of hope uh, on that hill on Davistown Road uh, because of Pastor Taylor and the fr Fruit of the Spirit uh, Ministries. I attended the uh, church dedication uh, several months ago and certainly was inspired uh, and impressed uh, by the enthusiasm that the congregation has, the hard work that they have put into rebuilding this old wooden church. Uh, and I can uh, certainly say thank you on behalf of our community for uh, your assistance uh, and the pastor's assistance in uh, revitalizing that church. The pastor uh, says that love is an action word and she demonstrates uh, her love for our community uh, and for Christ in a in numerous uh, ways whether it's through her mentoring program and assistance um, uh, for the prison ministries or caring for the sick or feeding the, uh, the homeless the pastor uh, is a uh, again a big part of our community we acknowledge her efforts uh, here today and please uh, pass on our congratulations on behalf of the uh, Township of Gloucester. So unfortunately, Pastor Teller could not be here tonight because she had an emergency that came up. However, she does extend her love. Um, and also, she wants, she, she wants to thank um, she's very grateful and thankful to Mayor Mayor and the council for this award. And um, as my pastor always says, to God be the glory. So thank you and God bless. Ruth Tracy can join me. was nominated by uh, Chief Earl for this award. She is a lifelong resident of Gloucester Township. She's a graduate of Highland. 
<laughs> She's worked at Timber Creek for, she worked there for 11 years, and now she works part-time at Rowan University in Glassboro. Um, still volunteers at the Timber Creek High School. She works with the students with multiple disabilities and the ladies program. Uh, devotes a lot of her time there. She also has become a very active participant in the National Night Out for Gloucester Township and has held one of the biggest uh, nights out that we've had and is a huge participant with that stuff. Um, she's the treasurer of Blackwood Kiwanis Club. She volunteers for Ronald McDonald House, uh, the Cystic Fibrosis Care Fund, the Kiwanis Golf Outing, and she also supports the Gloucester Township uh, Police Department Awards Night which gives awards to the officers, but also for, to the children of the township who participate in the Police Community Pride Poster Contest. Because um, her brother, correct, uh, was Chief, <coughs> Police Chief Andrew Fox. So that's a, you know, near and dear to her. Um, when we talked on the phone, she had, you know, we had discussed whether she would have to speak. And you know, I kind of said it was an option. And she said, I'm more of a doer than a speaker. <laughs> so. You know, we'll see if we can get her to say a word or two. And also, it is her birthday today, so we want to say <laughs> I'd like to thank Mayor and Council for this award and for uh, Chief Earl for nominating me. I've lived in the township over 50 years, and it truly is a pleasure to serve our residents. I, I feel very honored and humbled to do that. And I can't help but um, thank my husband and my family and my friends for their support because I couldn't do the things I do without their support and love. And above all, to my Savior, Jesus Christ, who gives me the strength to do it all. Thank you. Did we sing? Yes. Start us. Let's go. On the count of three. One. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ruth. Happy birthday to you. Happy, uh, happy birthday, uh, Ruth. You didn't realize this was really designed as a surprise party. <laughs> uh, we also, of course, extend our sympathies, as I know you lost your uh, mother last week, so we extend to you our, our sympathies uh, as well. Um, at this time, all, ladies and gentlemen, the honorees also received uh, this evening not only a plaque from the township, but also a citation on behalf of Senator Madden, Assemblyman Moriarty, and Assemblywoman Mascara, as well as a citation from the uh, County Board of Freeholders. And before I uh, conclude the program, I ask uh, Freeholder Michelle Gentek to uh, come forward and perhaps say uh, a few words. Hello everyone, all I can say is wow, what a wonderful group of women that we have here. You all look so beautiful, but not only did you look beautiful on the inside, but what's more important is that you were, you're, I think I totally messed that up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> what I was going to say is that you're so beautiful, look, you look fabulous on the outside, but what's more important is that you're beautiful on the inside. Uh, the theme of the night was family, was community, but most of all was faith. I just think it's so wonderful that women, you multitask. So I think that's great and keep doing it. Uh, you are empowered, but we really need you to uh, keep doing what you're doing so you can empower others. Thanks again. On behalf of the freeholders, we thank all of you. Thank you, Michelle. Um, let me also thank the uh, committee that worked very hard in putting this uh, this together uh, today and, and reviewing the uh, the applications uh, for uh, women who make a difference. Uh, and, and for helping to organize today's, uh, today's program. So thank you very, very much. Also, uh, to our students from Highland, thank you very much for lending us today your talent. I am probably the luckiest person in the world to have the opportunity to be mayor of such a great community, uh, which is represented by the individuals that you saw here today. 
you are the reason why Gloucester Township is a great place to live. You know, we're confronted sometimes with many negative things uh, that we, we may see in the press or uh, that we're confronted with in very challenging times. But there is so much positive things that are happening in our communities. Uh, and we, we're so glad to focus in on you today and the positive things uh, that are happening. So thank you for being who you are and making uh, Gloucester Township a very special place to live. I think that uh, Gloucester Township is like a tapestry where we take individuals such as yourselves and we have now woven a great community. I've had the opportunity, of course, to travel around uh, our, our township and meet individuals who unselfishly give back to our community, not because they want recognition, but because they have a drive, a motivation, a caring, a compassion to give back and to make uh, a world a better place and to make a difference. Uh, because of that, uh, Gloucester Township uh, earlier this year uh, purchased a piece of property that, uh, out of our open space fund that is located on the Black Horse Pike in the Glendora section of our community that is uh, directly across from the Glendora Fire Company next to the Veterans Monument that, uh, that is there. Uh, we purchased that, uh, that uh, piece of property because we want to acknowledge uh, those individuals such as yourselves who, again, give back uh, day in and day out, whether they are coaching uh, in some of our sports organizations, volunteering in our fire companies, uh, or doing what you do uh, and have uh, uh, spoken about uh, this evening. We will be building a Gloucester Township, a community and, and civic uh, wall of honor where your names will be placed upon uh, that wall and past, uh, past recipients as well. And each year, uh, each year, uh, the organizations, our civic uh, organizations, uh, um, community organizations in Gloucester Township will be nominating one individual uh, from their organizations who give back uh, to, to our community. Uh, that um, is going to be designed this year, it was purchased, and now we'll be designing it this year and uh, going to construction in 2014. So uh, on behalf of uh, our town council uh, and, uh, and myself, again, thank you so very much for what you do in caring uh, about our community. Thank you very much. Ladies. Before we uh, go to a, a break, I would just ask all the recipients to come forward uh, and so we can have a group picture with everyone. And uh, we will take a five minute recess. Good job, guys. Very nice. Okay. Hey, good job without you. Is there nothing that you want to hurt them? Great job. Great job. Thanks for getting to have to
Here. Mrs. Weiners? Here. Mr. Mercado? Present. Mr. Bianchi? Present. Now I'll have the first public portion and I wish you to uh, speak <coughs> on agenda items only. Please raise your hand and come to the microphone. Seeing no hands up, we see one. This is Carl. Car, Timber Birch. Uh, I wanted to ask something about the uh, the budget that you have on there. Sure. And I lost my paper somewhere between here and there. Uh, it, it had the uh, I had pulled out the uh, explanation. It had that our debt service was seven million whatever. Is that a, is that the total amount that we owe? For bond uh, issues yeah, or whatever. First, you are going to have a public hearing tonight on the budget. So if you want to, I, mean, I can answer the question. Yeah, I, I would answer the question. Yeah. Okay. Um, the the total, I believe the total outstanding debt is in the $40 million range. Right, $44 million something yeah, or other. That, that's just for the township. The, the debt service that you see in here is the actual amounts that have to be funded in the 2013 calendar year budget. That would be for principal and interest. <coughs> Seven million is being paid out in? Yes, yes. I don't have the exact figure. Okay. Me, but well, I did, but, you know. Um, how, how much of that is different from last year? I don't have, well, I mean, I can pull, I have to tell you exactly what the whole one's So last year, the uh, sheet 27 of the state budget document, the total municipal debt service uh, excluded from caps was 6861000 The amount that's budgeted for 2013 is 7172000 So it's approximately 200000 more than it was. 300000 right. Um, Right. Um, the all of the bonds that we have okayed this year, where do they fall into this? The new bonds for 2012 to now. We we haven't we have not permanently. We passed bond ordinances. Bond ordinances mm -hmm. are a list of items that we're going to acquire, construct. Right. Uh, so, you, so the council approves a bond ordinance. That then order authorizes us to borrow money. We have not permanently financed anything this year. Um, I don't recall the last permanent financing, but I don't believe there was one last year either. So they will all, all the, the, the cumulative, all these bond ordinances will be wrapped up into a long-term borrowing that will occur in 2014 at plan. Okay, and so, that so when saying, that's wrapped up, what's happened this year has not affected these numbers. So when that's wrapped up, that will be added to the seven point one million. But we will be retiring that. We, uh, the mayor okay, and so the, the administration and consultation with the council have reviewed the debt service schedules going forward into uh, ten years, looking at where we're at now and assuming a borrowing each year of a certain amount, because of the retirement of debt, our debt stays basically stable. Yeah. Well, given the fact that we're like up 300,000 more, do you anticipate retiring enough to cover that what we borrowed last year? I, Joanne, I don't have a debt service schedule in front of me. Yeah. I can only go as far as what I have for 2000. Okay. I've, I've been here before, and, and you know that my household brain does not think like your business brain. And I'm not a big proponent for bonds. I'm of the Susie Orman thing. If you can't afford it, then you pay cash. You don't use the credit card. And so every time I see a bond going out, I just get a little antsy. Um, I just want to, I would like to see a greater effort to pay 
down the debt rather than carrying seven million dollars a year that we're paying can't can't we use a million from the red light camera and get it down to six million Right, right. Can't we find the money from somewhere to lower our debt? We're budgeting for the payment of principal and interest. We're constantly looking at our outstanding debt to make determinations of call options so that we can reduce the amount of interest we pay on those on those borrowings. Uh, but we also have to be cognizant that there are infrastructure improvements that are necessary for this community. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that we could fund a lot more than what we're funding right now to take care of our roads, our drainage situations, and that is the primary use of our capital. Well, I, I can I can appreciate what you're saying, and I truly understand that it'll never get wiped out in a year, two years, five years, but I would also appreciate seeing next year's budget at least 300,000 on the other side rather than more. I would like to see an effort just to not spend more than we have or spend more than, you know, because we're paying for it anyway. But I appreciate all the efforts that you're doing. So. Jo Joanne, can I just add to, um, you know, S&P did a report when they upgraded our bond rating mm -hmm. uh, because of our strong financial uh, performance mm -hmm. in the town. Um, in that report, it acknowledged and cited the fact that we have a very low overall debt in compared to the size of the town and other communities uh, that they uh, that they review. So um, I understand what you're saying, but compared to the how, how large our, our budget is, how, how large the town is, even Wall Street is saying that we have a, a low over uh, overall debt. Uh, okay. for our I'm, ju I'm just using a homeowner, and to no. me, seven million just leaps out of there. But but that's kind of like when the Visa card says, we'll up your limit because you've paid well. I'm thinking, I don't want it upped. I want it kept. Well, no, no, the bond rating uh, approval was not that. It was to say that the township is, is on good financial standing and actually it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a belief in, in what we're doing. And that's why they upgrade our bond rating, which allows us to borrow to money get a lower at rate. a lower rate. Right. Yeah, and, and to put it in, in perspective, we're permitted to borrow up to 3.5% of the average of the last three years of the assessed value of the community. So the, the average of that is, is the community is valued right now at $4.5 billion. So 3.5% of that would enable us to borrow, according to my calculations, $157 million. And I said we're somewhere in the area of $40 million. So right. we're probably at about 1.4, 1.5% of what we could borrow. And the mayor is absolutely correct. Relatively speaking, comparing us to other communities throughout, throughout the United States, not just in New Jersey, our debt is re relatively low as a percentage of, of the overall size value. Well, I appreciate your prudence, but help me out a little if you can. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Anyone else? Yes, Mayor. Hi, Debbie Shin, Houston Court. I hadn't planned on even talking about this, um, but something she said triggered, triggered it in my mind. And I don't know if this is something you guys can help with or not, and I don't necessarily think it's an issue that you cause, but when we, whenever we do new construction projects, whatever the planning or zoning is, so I'm assuming, I'm blaming it on the EPA, um, you're required to put in these ditches, <coughs> and somebody's going to help me with what they're called. The basins. 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 Something basin. Yeah. Drainage. Drainage basin. Thank you. There's a couple on either side of Blackwood Clement Road there by 42, which have become a real nuisance for me. There's one over behind CVS. My point is that we put these things in, and I'm assuming the EPA makes us do it, and they have a really nice fence around them. And then that's it. They're not maintained. They grow weeds. The next thing you have is standing water. And I've reported several of them to the Mosquito Commission. And the best they can do is treat them to make sure that during the summer we can hold back our West Isle issues. 
I don't understand why we insist that these things be put in if we're not going to have someone maintain them. Why do we do that? Well, there's a whole engineering philosophy behind that, and I can leave that to John. Uh, most, of, uh, most of them have a lifespan, am I right, John? And they, they're, they need to be... Well, they do need to be maintained. Uh, there's different designs. Some are designed to go natural. Others uh, need to be kept mowed, depending on the original design. Uh, the purpose is to prevent... One of the purposes is to prevent flooding downstream. If you look at the older parts of town where there are no basins and all the uh, storm drainage dumps right into the streams, the streams have turned into deep gullies, nothing can live in and whatnot. So that, uh, since the 70s, late 70s, throughout the country, uh, it's mandated, as you said, by the EPA and mm -hmm. the state, the, the, the efforts have been to control flooding. Uh, some water is supposed to infiltrate into the ground and recharge the groundwater system. And there's a lot of issues. But the biggest problem has been making something. Most of them in the township are privately owned, not publicly owned, and rely on the owners of the property, the development, or whatever, to either make your way or the store to maintain those. Uh, there are some uh, publicly owned basins that no land does maintain those. Well, the ones, the two that specifically jump out at me as being as a huge issue are the two on Blackwood Clement Road. There's one on either side where the church is. They were put in at the time that the last time that they did the widening of the intersection. They have never ever been maintained. They are a mess. I don't know who owns it. Well, nobody does. Nobody does. I've talked to the state. I've talked to the county. I've talked to MUA. MUA sent me to the county. The county sent me to the state. The state sent me back to the county. The county suggested the church owns it. Well, I know they don't, because they didn't put it in. And they wouldn't have been authorized to put it in while the township was widening the road. I so that I knew was the wrong answer. Uh, nobody knows who owns uh, them. Well, I'm that's sure, that's sure, sure we don't, yeah. I mean, I to, uh, I'm sure it's part of the tax record. It is. It's uh, part of the assessor's so record. We can find out who owns it. So we, we will find out, and uh, John will uh, give us a report on who owns it and what can be done. Well, for the, for the time being, I've gone after the county uh, through Leonard's office? Yeah, Ian Leonard. Okay. And they put me in charge with the uh, mosquito folks, and the mosquito folks I have on my speed dial, and they can at least go out there, and they've been treating the swamp that's in there. But then as soon as I got those two taken care of, now there's one behind CVS off of Sicklerville Road, and that one actually has mosquitoes growing in it right now. So these things, to me, they're a public health menace. And, and there's so many of them, as soon as I think that, I'll tell you who does take care of them, Wawa. <clears throat> Wawa takes care of them. And they're about the only ones that I can say do. Now, I've seen a couple in Winslow, and I can recognize the difference, kind of, between the ones that are supposed to go natural and the ones that are supposed to be maintained. And I think that's dependent on whether or not they've built in a drainage system. Because the one over by ShopRite in Winslow, there's a big one. And that one, I can tell, is meant to grow natural because they've actually landscaped it that way. But, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up tonight, but it's, it's been bugging me since last summer, and I keep trying to do something about it. And summer's coming. And this is the time, and I keep trying to tell the county, this is the time to get in there and cut all that stuff back when it's dead. If you wait till summer, it's just going to end up being a problem again. But thank you.
We have ordinances of second reading, and these will have a public hearing. Ordinance 0-13-07. Ordinance amending Chapter 67A of the Code Book of the Township of Gloucester Title Property Maintenance Code, Article 7, Administration and Enforcement. This ordinance uh, will give more general and expanded enforcement of the uh, maintenance code. Dave, anything to add to that? No, it's more of a housekeeping. Uh, it gives the code enforcement uh, more authority to address some of the issues uh, besides just landscaping or overgrown grass. It also addresses now uh, you know, exterior of homes, gutters that are falling, and things of that nature. We now have a public hearing on this ordinance. Seeing no hands, we close the public hearing. Motion to adopt. Seven. Second. Only question? Yeah. Roll call, please. Mr. Archison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Seiler? Yes. Mrs. Trotta? Yes. Mrs. Winters? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Dancy? Yes. Ordinance 0-13-08. Ordinance amending Chapter 81, the Code of the Township of Gloucester and Total Control for the Movement and the Parking of Traffic on Public and Private Property of the Code of the Township of Gloucester. This ordinance allows for the traffic enforcement on the new Pet Boys site. We now have a public hearing on this ordinance. Seeing no hands, we close the public hearing. Motion to adopt. Second. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Seiler? Yes. Mrs. Trotto? Yes. Mrs. Winters? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Dan Keeney? Yes. We now have ordinance <coughs> for first reading. This ordinance, this ordinance will not have a public hearing. Ordinance 0-13-09. Ordinance amending Chapter 65A of the Code of the Township of Gloucester entitled Park Rules and Regulations of the Code of the Township of Gloucester. This uh, ordinance will hereby be amended to uh, read the following. The following rules and regulations are hereby adopted for the protection regulation patrol of parks roads, driveways, sidewalks, paths, bike paths, lakes, pools, fountains, trees, flowers, shrubs, statuary, building, and other, other subjects. And this specifically includes the bike path. Motion to adopt. So moved. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Seiler? Yes. Mrs. Trotta? Yes. Mrs. Winters? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Bean King? Yes. We now have resolutions of consent agenda. Any council person wishing to remove any of these resolutions, please let me know now. So I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. On the question? Yes, I have a question, Mr. President. Um, Director Moff, uh, yes, sir. resolution 97 with the can you explain to me what the track machine is? Track machine is uh, looks like a, a little bulldozer. It's a type of machine that we use to uh, uh, maintain the uh, ball fields and do uh, a lot of our landscaping work with. Okay. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Seiler? Yes. Mrs. Trotto? Yes. Mrs. Winters? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Van Keen? Yes. Resolution one five. Resolution to amend the No. 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 Here first. Yeah. <coughs> I was skipping that to do the other one. Oh I'm sorry. You can, you can do that. Start with one or five. Oh I'm sorry. It's three add on the two. Okay, resolution of approval, redevelopment agreement application. This is a resolution uh, for a redevelopment uh, agreement uh, with Simon Management Associates and Pre Rubin Incorporated. And this is for the Gloucester Premium Outlets. Motion to adopt. Second. Second. On, on the question? Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Seiler? Yes. Mrs. Toronto? Yes. Mrs. Winters? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Bean King? Yes. Resolution 13-03-106, resolution to make budget transfers between appropriation reserves in the calendar year 2012 general fund budget. 
This resolution will make budget transfers for the uh, from appropriate uh, reserves for the calendar year 2012 budget. Tom, anything to add to that? No. Motion to adopt. Second. Second. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Seiler? Yes. Mrs. Trotter? Yes. Mrs. Winters? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Bankini? Yes. Resolution 107, resolution adopting a temporary budget for the Tangent of Gloucester, temporary budget appropriations for 2013. As the title states, this resolution adopts a temporary budget for the Township. Tom, anything to add? No. Motion to adopt. Second. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. <coughs> yes. Mr. Seiler? Yes. Mrs. Strada? Yes. Mrs. Winters? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Dean King? Yes. We now have a public hearing on the 2013 municipal budget. See, yes, Pete. I'd be high ball morning, Sir Court. I just kind of had a general question uh, on our budgeting. Uh, we're, we have another year without a tax increase, and we all appreciate that. And over the past few years, we've seen various programs to reduce the tax burden, like the energy plan for the township and recycling program and shared services and uh, our bond upgrade rating for to lower interest charges. So just in general terms, what would you say are the offsets were that maybe increased the tax burden or either reduce revenues or increase expenses that would, wouldn't allow for a tax decrease actually over these past four years with these programs that are in place? Well, I think you have, you have to look at each year coming up in terms of the ability to replenish revenues. Um, and, and for most municipalities, the, the method of generating surplus is twofold. One, you get revenues beyond what you anticipated, and most municipalities are not experiencing that. Uh, two is that you uh, have a budget that has been prepared and have a set fixed amount of appropriations, and you don't spend all those appropriations. So we're working diligently to do both of those. That's a, that's a very, very difficult task. Um, so I would not recommend to the mayor or to the governing body to look at a decrease unless I felt that going forward we were able to, uh, to, to maintain either that decrease or, or, or the zero, a zero increase or a very slight increase. Otherwise, we're going to get, get clobbered. So. It's really a multi-year philosophy. So we, we've been carrying surpluses over the last couple of years, though, right? Yeah. In order, in order to balance this budget, okay. yes, we have absolutely. So, but we've also also looked to cut back in the appropriations. So there's been surpluses that have been carried over, and cutbacks in appropriations and these uh, expense reduction programs, and, and there's been red light camera revenues on top of that. So. There has to be some corresponding offset, like m maybe uh, health benefits or pension plans or things. I'm just, is there a couple bullet point items that could be described that would offset some of these decreases and, and the, like the red light camera revenue and, and something like that? And there's there's got to be some expense items that have gone up. Oh, your utilities cost and, right. and, and gasoline. gasoline. That's and, and Salary and wages, um, they're you know small increases, but they're still increases. Healthcare, uh, although we uh, we do a great job here because we're self-insured, we right. still see some oscillation of that. And actually, when comparing, we end up saving millions of dollars uh, being self-insured. Um, our way of, of doing our recycling, we save money by having the MUA do. There's numerous. Uh, programs that we are involved with different other agencies in which we uh, help uh, help to keep the cost down. So, you know, there are costs that go up and there are costs that we try to maintain. And I, I know the administration scrutinizes every opening, um, um, position opening that there is in deciding whether we need to fill it or, or um, not fill it. Uh, so they're very, they scrutinize those uh, scenarios. So there's a lot of things that, that they do look at, Pete, but um, there are things that go up just like at home, and there are things that you, you cut back on in which we do. 
So, so the things that have gone up then have pretty much all, I mean, over the last four years, since we've been flat tax for the last four years, things have gone up with pretty much offset these money saving programs that, that you've described. Right, and, and like uh, for some some situations, we had the, we didn't have a big snowstorm, although I don't want to jinx us. Um, well, you still have to appropriate money. But you have to appropriate the amount that could potentially be used. And then there's years where we had huge snowstorms, and that goes out the window. So you know, you know that's where the surplus. You know, if you're if you're balancing your your budget appropriately, being fiscally responsible, you're going to have that um, that money there that will take care of those situations. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pete. Anyone else? Seeing no other hands, we close the second public portion. Oh, no, we close the, <coughs> I'm sorry, the public <laughs> hearing <laughs> of the municipal budget. Uh, resolution 104 uh, to amend the 2013 calendar year local municipal budget. Tom, you want to have any? Uh, yeah, uh, Glenn, that was a, uh, we, when we do our budget, we introduce and we send that budget up to uh, the State Division of Local Government Services, and then there's a, a budget examiner that is assigned to each municipality to review the budget. When they went through it, they determined that there was a payment for NJEIT, New Jersey Environmental Infrastructure Trust, that should have been $125 more than what was budgeted, um, and, and just something that uh, insignificant, they, they, they were required to go back and make that adjustment. That That's reflected in this amendment. Okay. And this amendment does not require it, a, uh, an advertisement or a public hearing. Okay. So do we have a motion to approve the uh, Amendment to the Minister of Budget. So I'll move. Okay. Only question. Roll call, please. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Seiler? Yes. Mr. Strada? Yes. Mrs. Winner? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Bean King? Yes. And, and Glenn, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll check with the state to see the status in terms of the actual adoption of this budget. You've had your public hearing. The next step, once we get all the approvals, will be to adopt. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Uh, the mayor is foregoing his report due to the uh, length of our meeting. Uh, there is no GTE Gov access question, so we will now go to the second public portion. Who is anyone wishing to speak on any subject? Please raise your hand. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Jennifer O'Donnell, 1030 New Brooklyn Road, Aerial Section. Um, I live in the section where the construction, the road being ripped apart, began a really long time ago and I'm still dealing with the potholes all up and down New Brooklyn Road. I'd like to know who's doing what about it. I know it's a county issue, but we've been driving on these roads for a long time. Residents are having, you know, maintenance to their cars because of it. What's being done for the residents because of this? We have no benefit from the sewer being put in. I'd like to know what's being done to fix the roads. Well, again, as you know, it is a county road, and I know our mayor has been in contact, uh, constant contact, with the freeholders to uh, try to get uh, more of a resolution to that situation. Um, we've even passed the resolution designating how they should repair the roads because we have a lot of construction throughout our township dealing with the county and other agencies, and they just put a, a quick layer on it, and I'm assuming that uh, they are coming back because of the weather once the weather breaks. Yeah, they are. I mean, what, the way it was explained to me is they have to allow the um, what, what they dug up to settle. Um, they won't. They can't repair it because then it would sink again, and they would have to come back. So they have to allow that to to settle. Well, they're not even. They're still piping up and down Aerial New Brooklyn Road on people's front lawns. So they're not even done. Like they did a portion and then skipped a portion and then did a portion. It seems a little bizarre to me. Well, I, I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not uh, an engineer, but I know they, they've started up here, then they go back down to the southern end, then they're going to start up here again. Um, so I don't know why that's the case. Uh, my concern is making sure that it's repaired properly uh, once their construction is, is completed. Properly in a in, uh, reasonable amount of time would be nice. I hit potholes every day. Who's going to repair my car it would be, well, for the maintenance? On the, it's ridiculous. You're welcome, I mean, you can contact the county if you, if you want to pursue that. I, I don't I, yeah, that's like talking to a wall. Okay, 
well, I you, I don't, when I had problems with the construction workers in the first place, I contacted the county. I got nowhere. You graciously called me back. I'm still waiting for your phone call back, Chief Earl. But it's, it's just been nothing but a hindrance for the residents, and we get no benefit from it. So I'd like the council, or my elected officials, to get on their butts and say, yo, fix this. The residents have had enough. We Thank have, you. We have talked to the county. And again, uh, the mayor has talked numerous times to the county, as he's indicated. Um, we try. We will push them. We will continue to try to push them. Uh, there is a, a progression of how these roads get repaired, how they process, and how they um, schedule their uh, repair, you know, the digging and the repairs is beyond us, but I'm sure the mayor will work it's, it's been long enough. Well, I know, ma'am, but Thank they have you. to repair the line so that it doesn't break and it has to be done properly. And so we'll, we'll make sure that they, uh, they Thank keep you. it going. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to sympathize with my friend here a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. I live on Cross Keys Road. On the other side of the road is Winslow. This project, now I don't know what happened with us, but this project started on their side of the road. And I'm assuming it's the same contractor putting in their pipes that are putting in our pipes. They came down this road, this road, I'm not going to know the names, but they went across Cross Keys and down. When they tore up cross keys, they made a really nice hole that they put the pipe in, and then they very nicely patched it, and it was seamless. Some of it settled a little bit. They're going to need to come back and do some fix work. The reason that I mention this is when they got to our side, all of a sudden it became, let's just throw the stuff in the ground put a bunch of cold patch on, maybe we'll even, even it out a little bit and leave it. So for some reason, the same contractor that was very careful and meticulous about how they tore up Winslow streets are being creeps with our streets. Now that's my observation because I drive them all and it just amazes me because I was late getting here tonight, so I took, because I avoid Aerial Road at all costs. I will go around and take Sicklerville now. Thank you for paving that. But I came down Aerial Road, and it just amazes me the mess. And it's a mess what they did. And I'm only comparing apples and apples here. It was all the same work. Why did they do that to us? Is it because we didn't, and again, did we say to them in the beginning, you will leave our streets the way you find them? If you're going to do this, leave our streets and reset. Or if we didn't specify that, they're just taking advantage because we didn't? No, because as Glenn mentioned, we actually even passed a, a, an ordinance that requires anybody who's digging up our streets to repave the, uh, the portion that, not only the portion that they're digging up, but from the line to the curb. And if it goes into the center of the street, you know, where, where the line is, they would have to go curb to curb. Um, we've met with them. I've spoken with I met last week with Ian Leonard uh, regarding that. Um, you know, it, it's a difficult process. And I'm not I'm just happy with it, but, but it is a process. And you can't well, wasn't our ordinance a bit the horse out of the barn, though? Weren't they already tearing up our streets by the time we went, hey, we should have done an ordinance? But no, we didn't. Okay. Because what you have to understand is that it, this is an ongoing process, an ongoing process that is going to take time. Um, <coughs> and we're, we're being actually very proactive in, in the way we're approaching this. I've been very proactive, not only returning your calls, but uh, some of your neighbors' calls as well, doing the best we can. I don't control the process. I, I don't think anybody don't expects you to. Let him, let him finish, man. I'm oh, sorry. So, so <laughs> we're, we're being actually very proactive in trying to address the situation. Uh, hopefully this summer this is, will be all behind us and the roads will be put back to not only the condition in which they, they were, because they quite frankly weren't in the best then, mm -mm. Um, but better condition. Well, it just seems to me that for some reason they just left us in really bad shape. Because I know that on their side, on their roads, 
They were very meticulous in what they did. I just make that observation. And I'm not blaming you for that. I'm not blaming you guys for that. I'm making that observation. And these people really need to, whoever they are, need to be accountable. Because this is just, it's just, it's, there's no excuse for it. They could have done the same thing for us. We still would have been complaining. But it wouldn't look so bad. Thank you. Sorry. Anyone else? Joanne? <coughs> Joanne Carr. Sorry to do this, but I know when I go home and report to my dad what, what I talked about with the bond things, one of the answers that I got is going to send him, so I have to have an answer for him. I told him about the $7 million debt service. He goes, well, that's our total debt, right? I said, I'll ask the question. So the answer tonight was, that's our debt service. That's what we're paying each year. This year. How much, these are my dad, 92, clear in the mind. He just can't hear. That's why he doesn't come here. But he'll ask me, how much is our debt if we're paying $7 million a year? And I think Tom stated that that was approximately 44. It's, four, it's 40 something million. I don't 44 know million around there. Plus <coughs> well, all right. So the the total budget for keeping the lights on, paying the pensions, paying everything, and the bonds that we have out there, total. Is 44? No, that, the operating budget that pays for the lights and all the salary and wages is how many million? 45? 53 million. 53 million. 53 million, 53 million is the annual budget. 53 million is operating expenses. Right. Yes. In essence, yes. Including, including debt service, yes. Including debt service. Now, debt service, what Tom's talking about is the amount that we pay this year to pay those loans or those those bonds. The principal and interest. Okay. Bonds. So that's What's the, the debt principal? service. What's the principal that's out? Forty four. Forty something. Right. Thank you. Behind <coughs> uh, ball. I'm going back uh, to to an issue from last meeting, and that's the electric cars. I just did a, uh, I'm only going to talk about 600 bucks, which in the scheme of things is dropping the bucket, $53 million budget, but I just did a back of the envelope calculation of, of the savings. I compared, uh, did a calculation, assume each of these vehicles will be driven 24,000 miles over the two year life, which is the max, according to the lease agreement. And I compared that 24,000 miles uh, getting 112 miles per gallon equivalent, which is what these vehicles are rated to get. And I compared that to just driving a gas vehicle that we, we drive in this place around roughly 30 miles per gallon. And over that two year period, I showed that saving us in gasoline about $2,200 over the two years. And the, the leases are $2,700, almost $2,800. So we're talking, so what, on, on the surface, this looks like a great deal $2,700 to lease a vehicle for two years, but we're actually adding operate, adding expense to the township. And well, I'm not sure if uh, you based yours on 30 miles per I also hour. based on 112, which right. is probably the top end. It's probably not going to get 112. It's, when driving around town, that number is probably more like 90 or something or 100. So if I'm taking a rating of 112. And so I use what a rating would be for a vehicle 30. If you want to use 25, it still doesn't come out to a money saver. I, so. Yeah, Peter, I think you have to also understand that the cars that are being used by code enforcement uh, and um, construction, construction in particular, some of them are trucks. Uh, and the police cars are, you know, what, 12 miles a gallon uh, police cars. So, I mean, you have to keep in mind that that's, you have to factor that into the savings. So we're using a, a 12 mile per gallon vehicle when a, when a tiny little electric car would have served the purpose all, all these years? Well, keep in mind, the electric car is new. I mean, that's a great technology. Well, we could have been using a Prius or something. If, if, if these little electric cars would do the job. <coughs> yeah, but a lot of these cars, Pete, were recycled from the police 
from other departments that instead of just getting rid of them, we use them in other departments. A lot of them are 10 years old. Yeah, so those, those individuals don't get the, the best of the fleet. They're down at the bottom right before right. they're ready to go to auction. So that's how we recycled a lot of those vehicles. This is an opportunity to get a, an electric one to reduce the amount of gas used to to also you know, reduce our so-called footprint. Um, and, and so, I mean, it was an opportunity to do it. It's really not gonna, it's gonna come out probably break even. Right. So it's, it's an opportunity to take a look at them. And if it, if it doesn't fit our needs, we give them back, it doesn't really But I accept it. If we come close to break even and we're zero emissions and things like that, then that's, that's a good deal. Right. All right, right, thank you. Thank you, Pete. Anyone else? Seeing no other hands, we close the second public portion. Calling the directors and council, please. Mr. Massa. Up and out at this time. Mr. Lechner. Chief Earl. Nothing to report, thank you. Mr. Crosmere. Nothing to report. Mr. Cardis. Nothing to report. Mr. Cantwell. Nothing to report. Mr. Hodgson. Thank you for coming and staying this evening. Mr. Schmidt. Thank you for coming out, staying with us this evening, and uh, wanting to make a difference was really <coughs> nice tonight. Thank you. Mr. Siler? Yes, I would like to thank the mayor for presenting another budget with our tax increase, and also I'd like to offer my congratulations to the women that were selected this <coughs> evening. I think we had some outstanding participants there, and uh, I hope that the uh, program that Lindsay offered this evening about texting while driving, that is something that we need for safety in there, and I hope it takes effect throughout the state. Uh, that's all I have to say. Mrs. Trotta, thank you everyone for coming out and staying with us this evening, and congratulations to all the award recipients. recipients for women who make a difference. It was uh, very enjoyable to learn a lot about these women. Mrs. Winters. I want to thank everyone for coming out and congratulations to the nominees for the women who make a difference. It's nice to hear all those things that happen in our township and the women that are there to make them happen. Mr. Mercado. I want to thank everyone for coming out this evening. Uh, congratulations to all our honorees for Women's History Month and also to the committee for putting together a fantastic program. Uh, congratulations to Debbie Simone and the individuals from Blackwood Fire uh, Department for a huge event yesterday at St. Baldrick's uh, over at the um, plaza where Sam's Bar and Grill is. Uh, in addition, they had a car show, but also uh, where they raised $43,000 uh, for pediatric cancer research. Uh, on Saturday, the uh, rec department held their bunny, annual bunny Easter breakfast. Uh, Director Moffa, you have two outstanding supervisors that, that run that program and, and run a recreation department. Food was sold out by around 1045. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger each year. So uh, please send uh, my thanks and congratulations to those two. Uh, and on April 13th, uh, the Gloucester Township 5K race is taking place here starting at Veterans Park. If you can't do 3.1 miles, you can do a mile around the track. Uh, we'll take all comers at the walk as well. Uh, that will be held on April 13th. Thank you, Mr. Bianchini. I'd like to thank all the uh, residents for attending tonight's meeting, and I too would like to congratulate all the recipients of the awards tonight. With that, I'd like to have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, those against? Good night. Good night.